What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I've got an early review of the brand new Air Jordan 1 High Flyknit. A few months ago images leaked of the Flyknit Air Jordan 1 in the bread colorway and that kind of made sneaker Twitter go a little crazy. Some people loved the shoe but also a lot of people really didn't like the shoe because they felt like it was taking their favorite classic shoe and turning it into something it didn't need to be. I wasn't totally sure how I felt about it, I just wanted to wait and see the shoes in hand before I made my final decision. And I've got to give a big shout out to Jordan Brand because they sent me a pair of the Flyknit Air Jordan 1s a couple weeks early and I've got to say guys. I'm really impressed. So without further ado, let's jump right into the review. Here they are, the Air Jordan 1 High Flyknit in the bread colorway. Starting off the sneaker, you've got the most controversial and noticeable change to the Air Jordan 1 silhouette, the full Flyknit upper. Jordan Brand took a pretty huge risk by changing the entire upper of the shoe from the beloved and classic leather to this new Flyknit. From a distance, you might not even be able to tell that this is a Flyknit shoe, except for maybe the color. But once you get closer, you realize that the shoe doesn't have the sort of sheen that regular leather has, and that it's actually a fully knit upper. Because the shoe is made up of Flyknit, it doesn't have the layers that a regular Air Jordan 1 would have. And so what Jordan Brand does to separate the different panels of the shoe other than color is to change the thickness of the knit. Around the tip of the toe, you've got this really tight black knit that's actually pretty fine and pretty flexible. And then as you move back in the toe box, they've added another layer of knit on top of that black Flyknit with a thicker, wider red knit. As you move back on the shoe, the Flyknit changes again to a much thicker, stiffer knit, similar to the knit you might find on a sweater. That area has a couple different holes for the laces to run through, and surprisingly, I think it's going to be pretty durable, and I'm not too worried about the laces pulling out the Flyknit. Jordan Brand changed up the laces as well by not using the regular flat black laces. Instead, this time around, they use black wax laces. These are, of course, more stiff than regular laces, and they also have a sheen that adds a nice little detail to the shoe. Continuing back on the shoe on the side panel, they basically reversed what they did on the toe box. They have a very fine red knit underneath a thicker, wider knit black material. That's the one part of the shoe I don't really love because I really like the classic look of the all black side panel, and this kind of detracts from it a little bit, but it's not enough for me to dislike the shoe. One of my favorite things about the sneaker is that Jordan Brand used premium leather on both the swoosh and the wings logo. Rather than printing the details on the leather, they actually embossed it, which gives it a super clean premium look. I'm glad they did that because I definitely would have been bummed out if they had done a fly knit swoosh on the Air Jordan 1. Continuing back on the shoe, the colorway stays true to the original bread colorway with these thicker knit red back panels. This knit is by far the thickest knit on the shoe and it definitely adds a lot of support to the heel, which I really appreciated. Moving up the shoe, you've got a black fly knit tongue and at the top of the tongue, you've got this leather tag with Nike Air written in red. Inside the sneaker is another one of my favorite touches, the leather sock liner. Rather than using the regular mesh plush sock liner, they ended up using this leather, which I think is a really cool premium touch and gives the shoe another dimension. Just like the bread ones from 2016, which had text printed on the inside of the ankle, the new Flyknit ones have a similar detail with the size and the 1985 and 2017 written in gold. Another cool touch is that in the back of the tongue, they added a Flyknit spool and 1985. Jordan brand definitely didn't skimp on the insole of the shoe. It's different than all the other Air Jordan ones. It's a super plush and super comfortable black insole. It actually kind of feels like memory foam a little bit. It's really, really comfortable. As for fit, these pretty much fit me the way any other Air Jordan 1 would, which is true to size. However, if you have a chance to try these on first, I would definitely suggest doing that as I do with all other shoes, just to make sure that you're getting the right size for you. Although some of you guys might not like the aesthetics of the Flyknit Upper, one huge upside to the shoe is that this Flyknit Upper is crazy, crazy comfortable. And if you don't like creasing up your Jordans, you don't have to worry about that here. Seriously, this is the most comfortable Air Jordan 1 I've ever worn, and that's due in part to the insole, which again, feels like memory foam, which is crazy. And also the main reason that this shoe is so comfortable is because this Flyknit upper is so flexible and so breathable, it almost doesn't even feel like you're wearing an Air Jordan 1. I guess the closest comparison I can come up with other than the Chuck Taylor High Flyknit is maybe like a High Flyknit racer. If you can imagine how that would feel, that's pretty much how this feels. And that's pretty good. Moving down the shoe, we get back to the regular Air Jordan 1 with the standard Air Jordan 1 midsole. And then finally rounding off the sneaker, you've got the Air Jordan 1 outsole in red. One thing I found kind of interesting is that this shade of red doesn't actually match any of the other shades of red on the shoe. They're all slightly different. However, this outsole is almost the exact same color as the bread outsole from 2016. I think that was on purpose. Maybe they had some extra bread one outsoles laying around. Who knows? Also, now that I'm thinking of it, the red accents that are in leather are also a slightly different shade of red than the rest of the Flyknit. That doesn't bother me as much, especially since it kind of makes them pop out from the shoe more, but it was just something that I noticed. Overall, I'm super, super impressed by the Flyna Air Jordan 1. I really didn't think I would be. I really didn't even think I would like the shoe, but uh, man, trying these on and holding these in hand 
really changed my mind. This is definitely a shoe that some people will never like and other people will fall in love with. It really depends on what you like from your sneakers. I personally, like I said before, really like this sneaker and I think I'm gonna rock this right after I film this video. If you guys are trying to grab a pair of these for yourself, they drop on September 9th on Nike.com and other select retailers. Once again, huge shout out to Jordan Brand. Oh, before I forget, the packaging, they sent this shoe in next level. It's like a concrete box with like an Air Jordan 1 imprint on it. It's it's absolutely insane. If you guys want to check out that unboxing, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's throw these guys on feet and see how they look. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Air Jordan 1 High Flyknit and if you're planning to grab a pair for yourself on September 9th. Thanks again to Jordan Brand for sending this pair of kicks out early, it's seriously an awesome sneaker. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know if you're planning to grab a pair of these for yourself on September 9th. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to Seth Fowler if you want to see more content just like this, and follow me in all other forms of social media, the links will be in the description below.